Okay, so this is for the subject strategic business analysis and the topic for this video is product life cycle management or PLM. So we have here an article from investopedia.com. So let's begin with the definition. PLM, product life cycle management, it refers to the handling of a good as it moves through the typical stages of its product life. So again, we have the development and introduction. You have the growth, maturity, or stability, and then the decline. So this handling, essentially management, involves both the manufacturing of the good and the marketing of it. Okay, so essentially as it goes through the stages, um, the mark, the manufacturing cost, it, it's supposed to decline because of you know we have the learning curve, learning curve, and through experience, the management would know where to source out the best materials, how to improve the quality of the goods. And essentially, that should reduce the production cost of the goods, right? And then as for the marketing, so at the initial stages, it's supposed to spend more on advertising so that more and more people would get to know that the product exists and that they would be, you know, enticed or encouraged to buy or acquire the product. Okay, so that's the marketing side of it. And then depending on the stage, they can uh, decrease the spending on the marketing expenses or for the promotion of the product okay the concept of product life cycle helps inform business decision making from pricing and promotion to expansion or cost cutting okay so essentially if you can reduce the cost of the good by reduction of manufacturing costs then you can also control or reduce the pricing and then as for the promotion, then, you know, if it's already growing or if it's in the maturity stage already, you can decrease the expense on the promotion. And then um, during the growth or maturity stage, you can uh, decide for expansion. And then also during that time when the management is already experienced with the process, then they can also cut certain costs. Okay? Understanding product life cycle management, um, effective PLM brings together the many companies, departments, and employees involved with the product's production to streamline their activities. So it's not just the you know production department, it also it will also involve the other departments. You have the sales department, marketing department, HR, accounting, finance, collection, credit, and others, right? With the ultimate goal of producing a product that outperforms its competitors. You know, normally yung, uh, one of the goals ano, to be the leader, to beat all competitors. And uh, of course, when you do that, then you are assured that you have a higher share of the market. And that would translate to high profitability. And, you know, it would also allow the product to last as long as there is consumer desire and as long as technology permits, right? Also, if the product can be, you know, innov innovate, uh, innovated or updated, upgraded, then uh, it doesn't necessarily mean that, you know, after the growth, the maturity, the next stage is decline. After the maturity, there could be a little decline, but uh, the, if the product can be upgraded, then it could, again, you know, lead to another growth, another maturity instead of going through a decline, right? So, it goes well beyond just setting up a bill of materials. Bill of materials, you prepare this when, uh, you know, before you start production. Let's say you're planning to uh, produce 1,000 units of the product, then you would, you know, list down, make a bill of materials that you would need to produce that much. Uh, units of the product, right? So it's more than that, right? PLM systems help organizations cope with increasing complexity and engineering challenges of developing your product, especially with, you know, the advent with the application of technology in almost every product nowadays, as, as especially in the manufacturing process then, and uh, our, you know, robotics, use of machineries instead of uh, humans manual labor they can be considered one of the four cornerstones of a manufacturing corporation's information technology structure so the IT structure uh, it says here there are four cornerstone uh, cornerstone the first one of course is um, the PLM product lifecycle management the second one is customer relationship management or CRM 
Uh, and then you have your supply chain management, SEM, dealing with you know suppliers. Ensure that you have uh, that your supplier would have the available materials that you need when you need it during production. And then uh, for you to be able to source them out or to receive them, you know, just in time for production. And then you have your ERP, uh, Enterprise Resource Planning. Essentially, you manage the resources within the enterprise. Okay. PLM involves both the manufacturing of the good and the marketing of it. So it doesn't end with just manufacturing the good. Okay. It also involves the manufacturing of it because essentially the stages would refer to how the market is receiving the product. If there's still demand, then most likely it's going to uh, grow. If there's increasing demand, it's growing. If there's you know, a somewhat stable demand for it, that is quite high, then that's the maturity or stability. But then if it goes down, then you have the decline. Okay, So it's not just about the uh, production or manufacture of the good. Identifying which stage of its life cycle a product is in determines how long it will be marketed. So for example, a new, mar a new product needs to be explained, okay, uh, introduction, I know. Uh, while a mature product needs to be differentiated, differentiated from the uh, competition, okay. PLM can affect more fundamental, for more fundamental elements of a product too, even after it reaches maturity. A product can still grow, especially if it is upgraded or updated or augmented in some way. Okay. If there are improvements that can be done to it, then go ahead and do so. And then another growth, another maturity, right? Instead of declining. Benefits of product lifecycle management. So sound PLM has many benefits such as getting the product to market faster. Yes. Putting a higher quality product on the market. You know, through your experience, you'd know which materials are of low quality, which supplier provides the best uh, materials, and then also the workers would know how to uh, improve the production of the goods. So over time, there is that particular uh, learning, right? And that would assure higher quality of the product on the market. Okay, and of course, you'd also experience the customer complaints. What's the usual complaint, the usual damage or defect of the product? And with that information, you would have to resolve that, address that, and then, um, you know, make, ensure that it would not happen again, that it's resolved, essentially, right? Improving product safety, especially those that are, you know, somewhat hazardous, choking hazard, or uh, something like that, right? Increasing sales opportunities, you know, distribution, network, contacts, and then, um, of course, creating a need, marketing it better to more and more people, and then reducing errors and the waste. Specialized computer software is also available to assist with PLM through functions such as document management, design integration, and process management. But this is more on, you know, uh, the research and development uh, phase, right? Higher benefits include improved product quality and reliability, yes. reduce prototyping costs, more accurate and timely requests for code. Okay. Over time, you'd know how much materials you'd need and then when you need them for production you know, so that you could reduce the cost on storage of you know, materials not being used, right? Quick identification of sales opportunities and revenue contributions. Uh, savings through the reuse of original data. So if you reuse original data, then do so, especially in upgrading or improving the product. A framework for product optimization, reduced waste, uh, you know, using lesser materials to produce the product. And then, of course, when you use the materials, ensure that you use it to produce the, uh, the product and it doesn't go to waste, right? Improve ability to better manage seasonal fluctuation management. Improve forecasting to reduce material costs. Maximize supply chain collaborations. For example, um, if your product is in the growth stage, so you can expect that you know your the business would plan uh, producing more of the product. In that sense, then um, you'd be what do you call this? You'd be buying more 
materials, right? But when it's in the decline stage, so that would not be the case. You would have to reduce the acquisition of the materials and that would translate to reducing the material cost as well, right? And then you have your maximized supply chain collaboration relationship with the suppliers. You have your uh, value chain analysis, right? A history of BLM. So the concept uh, arose as early as 1931. Around 1957, an employee of Booz Allen and Hamilton, the advertising agency, theorized a five-step life cycle for goods, beginning with the introduction, rising through growth and maturity, and eventually heating, saturation, and decline. So they might have removed saturation. But eventually, BLM developed as a manufacturing and marketing tool for businesses seeking to maximize the advantage of bringing new products to the market first. So sometimes it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to, uh, what they call this, produce a product first before marketing it. Sometimes you can market it first so that you're, you'll be assured that there is a market for it and that people would, uh, you know, receive it well. Because if the perception is not good, then you shouldn't bother uh, producing the goods, especially if you're planning, you know, large quantities of it, right? Uh -huh. One of the first recorded applications of modern PLM occurred in American Motors Corporation in 1985, looking for a way to speed up its product development process to better compete against its larger competitor in 1985 while lacking their larger budget, so they have um, resource constraints. AMC decided to place emphasis on bolstering the product life cycle of its prime products, particularly Jeeps. Following that strategy, after introducing its compact Jeep Cherokee, the, the vehicle that launched the modern SUV sport utility vehicle market, AMC began development of a new model that eventually debuted as the Jeep Grand Cherokee. Okay. So essentially, they have this, um, what do you call this, growth maturity for a particular product, and then they introduced a new one which was received well. It has been very stable, the SUV, okay. and then they developed a new product. It's actually they did not stop innovating their products or thinking of new products to uh, serve their customers, right? Key takeaways, product life cycle management refers to the handling of a good as it moves through the typical stages of its lifespan. So you have development or introduction, growth, maturity, and decline. PLM involves both manufacturing of the good and marketing of it. PLM benefits include shortening product development times, yes, knowing when to ramp up or reduce manufacturing efforts. So, kapag growth, sa maturity, go ahead, taasan nyo yan. And of course, kapag decline, edi baba na natin. But when it comes to marketing, initial, uh, introduction stage, yun yung mataas ang marketing expenses. Pagdating ng growth or maturity, pwedeng baba na. And of course, decline, much lesser, right? And how to focus marketing efforts. The first part in its quest for faster product development was computer-aided design, the AD software system, that made engineers more productive. The second part of this effort was the new communication system that allowed conflicts to be resolved faster, essentially application of technology, right? As well as reducing costly engineering changes because all drawings and documents were in a central database. So majority of products, they do need designs and they do require the efforts of you know architects or engineers and so you know product design just to make sure that they are working properly functioning properly the product and so when they present it of course to the management it's easier for you know the com communication process and for uh, the accessibility of the document right the product data management was so effective uh, that after AMC was purchased by Chrysler, the system was expanded throughout the enterprise, connecting everyone involved in designing and building products. By adapting PLM technology, Chrysler was able to become the auto industry's lowest cost producer by the mid 1990s. So essentially, um, after PLM, ERP was also developed or applied in companies, right? All right, so that's it for this video. Again, we've discussed um, product life cycle management. Again, it's um, manufacturing of the goods and then marketing of it, right? Essentially, those are the two uh, goals of product life cycle management. And then product life cycle, you have introduction, growth, maturity, and decline. 
and then um, you have the various what do you call this benefits that have been uh, mentioned here okay but essentially it's uh, narrowing when to increase certain costs and when to decrease certain costs you know, depending on the stage of um, the product right okay so that's it for this one thanks and bye